In this video, we will go over how to find the largest eigenvalue of a given matrix. And we'll use the power iteration method to do so. Um, I'm just going to import my libraries that I'm going to use. And uh, let's start with a sample 2 by 2 matrix here. Okay, so this is a sample matrix. You can uh, find the eigenvalues using the NumPy package so that uh, we can see what the actual eigenvalue and eigenvectors are. So e comma b equal np dot linear algebra dot i function. And we can see both e and b. So I separate it. So this, these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenvectors, okay? And um, this one is the eigenvector for this eigenvalue. And this is the eigenvalue and the eigenvector pair, okay? So this is what we can find, okay? And the largest value here is this one, this 2.45, and this is what we will solve for using the power iteration method. So here I have a small code just to show you exactly what eigenvalues and eigenvectors mean. And uh, so in this code, what we will do is we'll start with a random value for x, the vector x, so 0.2 and 1. And then I will basically uh, multiply it with a. Okay? Multiplication with the a matrix is, you can think of it like you're transforming the vector x. So the, the vector x gets squished and squeezed and, and the direction also might change. Okay. So it can get longer and the direction will change as well when you do the transform, which is multiplication with A. Okay. And we will then set that to be your new X. So here I have the original vector here. And if I multiply it with A, I get I the, the vector then transformed. So it was here first. Now it's longer and it has changed direction. Okay. And you can keep doing this again. So we'll do it another step. And you can see it gets longer and it gets transformed again. So it, from here, it became like this. Changed angle and became longer. Okay. If you keep doing this, what you will notice is, oh, by the way, the ones in red over here are the actual eigen eigenvectors of the matrix A. These are the eigenvectors of matrix A. So I want you to notice what happens to these arrows. Okay. As you apply the transform again and again. If I increase this, you'll see that it just wobbles around, gets longer, of course, but it kind of points in the direction of the eigenvector. Okay. So if I go back, so you can see this is the eigenvector that we have here. It's in this direction. Okay. And as you increase the number of iterations, you can see that the transformed x vector kind of converges on to that same direction. Okay. And if you go back, you can look at the length of these uh, vectors. I have multiplied them with the eigenvalue, and this is the, the largest eigenvalue that you have. Okay. So this is basically the essence of power iteration. Now, one issue here you will see is that as you go do more iterations, it just gets larger and larger. So to prevent this from getting out of hand, what we will do is we'll normalize it. And in this particular case, the easiest way to normalize it is just by dividing it by the, the largest value in the in the vector, okay, which happens to be the scaling factor, which is your eigen value as well. Okay, so the eigen value is just the largest value in the vector, which is max x. Okay, and if you if you have this number, let me put it on top. You can just divide it, divide your vector by that value so that it scales down to like a, a smaller scale, so it doesn't get blown out of proportion. So let's run this. And now you can see uh, we're just interested in the direction or the direction in which the eigenvector is pointing. And as I increase the number of iterations, you can see kind of just wobbles around and converges onto the onto the, the largest eigen uh, vector okay? or the eigenvalue. And you can increase the number of iterations and you will see this effect more clearly. So start from small value. And as you do this repeatedly, you see that it converges onto the eigenvector. Okay, the eigenvector that belongs to the largest eigenvalue. Okay, 
And if you print the, the eigenvalue, you can see that it converges on to 2.44. So go back to the beginning. So it's 2.2 first. And as I increase the number of iterations, you can see the number is approaching 2.4 something. If you go back up, you will see that this is the largest eigenvalue. Okay. So that's the essence of power iteration method. Now, uh, to implement this um, in code, so again, just to reiterate, you want to find the eigenvalue, uh, the largest eigenvalue of the matrix A. In order to do that, all you have to do is start with some value of x, so np dot array, and you can set to 0.2 and 1, it doesn't matter. And then you just have to transform your x vector. And you have to do this inside a loop, so you have to do it multiple times. So for i in range, you can set a number n for the number of iterations. Set it to 10 for now. And then you just say x equal to uh, a multiplied by x. Now you cannot do a multiplied by x directly because these are arrays. They are not matrices. So you have to use the function np dot dot product. Okay, between a comma and x this is the same as matrix multiplication of a and x okay and uh, like we mentioned before we want to we are interested in finding the eigenvalue so the eigenvalue is the largest value in the matrix in the vector x and you want to normalize it so that it doesn't get out of proportions uh, eigenvalue yeah okay and print eigenvalue and if I run this code, again, you'll see that it's approaching the eigenvalue 2.45. That's the true value. So it's, if I increase the number of iterations, you'll see it's approaching the right eigenvalue. Okay. Now, to put this inside a pandas data frame, so you can save it and load it up, um, I'll create a results pandas frame, pd dot data frame. And the columns are going to be my eigenvalue. And I want to look at the relative error. So you can see as you increase the number of iterations, the number doesn't change much. So it's 2.434644. So you also want to look at the relative error. So eigenvalue and the error. Okay. And to plug the values in, uh, sorry, to find the error first, you can, you have to store the old eigenvalue. So old value put eigenvalue and then the error is going to be equal to the absolute of the difference between the, the new value so eigenvalue minus the old value divided by the new value so eigen okay multiply by 100 that's your error now you can store both the error and the uh, the eigenvalue into the data frame. So result dot location iteration number i equal to this iteration number i comes from the for loop, and you can give it the eigenvalue and the error. Okay, and you can then show a preview of the results. Click on run. I'll remove this print command so that we're gonna see that in the table anyway. So there you go. So these are your eigenvalues and these are the errors. And now you can implement conditions that says that if the error falls below 5%, you can stop. Okay. To do that, you can just say right after, after you put the values inside the table, you can say if error is less than, let's say 5%, just break. Okay. So you can see once the error value falls below 5%, that means there's not much change happening here. You can stop and that's your final answer. Okay, uh, I hope it's clear. Thank you.